Welcome, everyone, to another fantastic episode of the Puff Drink Talk podcast. I'm your host, Conrad Schubach. I'm Dylan Wilson. I'm Hilton Kill. And Jaja Baich. And today, we're going to be talking about leap years because that's tomorrow. We have an extra, we have an extra day this we year. We do. We do. It is also the lunar oh, right. year. It's tomorrow. <laughs> it is it's tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. It is the lunar year for the year of the dragon, which is my year. This is my Chinese zodiac sign. I don't I know. I think it's it's my daughter's as well. Oh, really? I think so. They were born in uh, what year? 2012. Well, 2012. Yeah. So it would also be the dragon as mm-hmm. well. Then we're going to get into uh, some other topics. We're excited to use our segue knowledge and uh, and wit, so stay tuned. Yes. Strap in. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, share. Yeah. Help us that. out. Help us out in yeah. this podcast. We really appreciate it. And comment when impossible. Right? Yeah. 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 Send us some comments. Yeah. Let us know. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, to leap here. It is a leap year. And I always wondered this. Mm. If you were born on a leap year, like how would you celebrate it? So, Dylan. My grandma was born on leap day in 1944. So tomorrow she'll be 80. And we always just celebrate it the day before, typically. Yes. It's the 28th. It's, but we do make jokes every year um, that, it, you know, she hasn't <laughs> aged. Right. It's not really her birthday. So really she'll be turning 20. It's her 20th birthday. Isn't that crazy? But yeah. why you celebrate on the day, day before? It should be on the day after. No, it's in the same month. The day after is in the new month. And then my stepdad's birthday is on March 2nd. So it's like we always just end up clustering. You know, There's so many birthdays around the same time. Except when you're in Texas and this perception of time is different, right? Because it's it seems like the summer has started last week here. So I think you would get lucky. Minus today. <laughs> no, we're just... We're, Minus today, yeah. We have two days of winter. <laughs> exactly. That, that's not even... It's crazy, right? So... Yeah, I mean, I was skeptical when the ground dog predicted an early spring. But I think he was right. Because it's been warm. So today is kind of cold. Tomorrow's going to be cold. But I think it goes right back into the 70s. So yeah. That's good weather for February in Texas. Saturday's going to be 80. Yeah, it was 80 last weekend, too. It was getting 90, uh, 87. But you know what? Just a friend just reposted what happened to her a year before. And exactly the same day, it was 91 last, oh. last year. Last year? Last year. The point is that the perception we have, because, you know, the past years have been very cold. Yeah. So we have the snow. Yeah. And we didn't have snow this year. No. We it's, didn't have snow this year. It's the first warming. time here. It's global warming. But it's the first time mm. since I'm here. Climate Since 2019, change. right, that I haven't seen um, snow. But 2019, 2021, 22, 23, all had snow. Yeah. So yeah. it was the first time. That's weird. And that's funny that you say that because when I, I, uh, I told you about how I convinced our friends to move out here also, they came out here in January. And the whole time they were like, oh, so what's the weather in Texas? And I'm like, I don't know. I've never been to Texas. It's great. It's amazing. It never snows. Two weeks into them moving out here, it snowed. And they're like, Connor, what the hell is this shit? <laughs> I thought you said it doesn't snow out here. And I'm like, I don't know. I lied. I I, so I guess it does snow in Texas. I, I guess I need friends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, we're moving back to California. I will give you a credit of the climate change if it snows in May here. If it snows in May in Texas, then I am sure there's a problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? So in May. I'm yeah. not even talking about August, right? I'm talking about May. Yeah. You know, then I would say, okay, we have a here. Texas, Houston, we do have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's a perfect segue into the future of automotive and and reducing our carbon carbon footprint. Um, hydrogen. We didn't talk about leap year yet. Well, you automatically went into the perfect segue to things. You yes. Gotta, you set it up. I mean, that's. I mean, that was a slow. Pitch. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hydrogen. <So>. Hydrogen. <laughs> okay. Now summary. Uh, too long didn't read. <laughs> too, too long didn't read. Okay. Future. Hydrogen. Okay. Cars. <laughs> Next subject. Yeah. Exactly. That's the end of the podcast. <laughs> 
Thank you. See you later. Me. Thank you very much yeah. for watching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Subscribe, my <laughs> exact comment. comment <laughs> <step by. laughs> I didn't know. I mean, we could go back to leap year. It's just <laughs> Hilton set it up so goddamn perfect mm -hmm. for I our didn't. transition. Oh. Yeah. What did I, I say? You said the climate and climate change, and everyone was bringing up climate. So like, yes. Okay. So uh, I, I, I see. I see. Well, but I didn't say. If I, I want to have kids on leap year. You want to have kids on leap year? I only. Oh, you only have kids on. So leap year. I kind of uh, skipped. The last one, because I had a little fight with my wife, so... And you had to wait four and more then years. And I had to wait four years, so I'm about, like, tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a good day. Uh, you probably won't be seeing me, to you know, at work, because uh, we kind of work the whole day. Gotcha, gotcha. And then in December, we have a baby. All down the floor. So you've been planning <laughs> that, right? You've been planning yeah. that, yeah. For, for seven, for eight, 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 eight years For eight now. years, yeah. Man. Yeah. I would be a little bit desperate. <laughs> <laughs> the pipes are rusty. <laughs> but he came on record and he said that. <laughs> that that's, that's why, I, you know, my hair is not colored anymore. And so it's like so I lost all the whatever thing that colors the hair. Melanin or whatever it's called. Melanin? I'm so actually I'm, surprised you even laugh and are, are here. I thought you'd be a withered old man, just like decrepit. Yeah. That's, yeah. I'm telling you. I've been exercising though. Oh, good! Yeah. Hey, there well, you go. You've been you've yeah. been all together with half of the congressmen. <laughs> the crap right just. <laughs> Jesus. Well, half Wait. of the uh, half of the congress you just in good company. Mm -hmm. Okay, hydrogen. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Enough about Hilton's sex life. Yeah. <laughs> In the Congress, and yeah. In you're putting politics into my sex life. Uh -huh. <laughs> no. no, hydrogen, please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so hydrogen. Um, well, hold on. You want to talk to that camera? Yeah, yeah let's talk to that camera. Mm -hmm. So I really do. Uh, and, and, and Dylan was nice enough to pull up. Uh, I don't know what this website is. Vacancy, vacancy. <clears throat> oh, you want to put the computer on? Uh, but it's it's it's. Given like a little brief description of the the comparisons between hydrogen and electric cars, which is one wh which one is more sustainable, um, and then will hydrogen cars replace electric cars? Um, there's a possibility that green hydrogen fuel cells could gain traction in the near future for commercial and industrial purposes. Still, hydrogen cars have no chance to replace electric cars in the upcoming years. Keyword so, upcoming, whatever they consider to be upcoming. Exactly, exactly. So. To that point, I've been uh, I've been listening to the Sean Ryan show. Uh, he's a military special forces retired special forces uh, person who has a podcast, and so he does a little bit of he talks to special forces, medics, FBI, CIA agents, and anything and anything to you know deal with the government. And of course, when you deal with the government, you're gonna ultimately get into conspiracy theories, aliens, sure. and government cover-ups. Uh, so this <laughs> latest episode is, well, the latest episode that I've been listening to is with uh, Dr. Billy Carson, who's a fantastic, very intellectual person. But right off the get-go, like within the first five minutes, they start the podcast and he goes, my, mark my words, in 10 years, electric vehicles will be garbage and hydrogen will... Will be. Yeah, I saw something on that. <clears throat> so, after that, and then of course, George brought it up uh, as some of the topics that we can discuss. Uh, and then I'd also read about Toyota um, in the podcast they were talking about uh, Rolls Royce, and then the military. The military has a, a hydrogen-powered warship that they're the motors in development. And I, but I believe in France or another country actually has it in production. And it's basically designed to never come back for fuel. It's basically just patrolling endlessly. They'll fly supplies, shipments, people, etc. out there, ship the old back, old stuff back. But it's basically taking the fuel from the ocean and, and just replenishing the, uh, the motor with it. So it's just going to be out out there doing its patrols and, and never having to come back for anything. And even like to season the food, you can get the salt that's going to be coming out of the car as well. God dang it. Season the food. Yeah. Like the Turkish guy. Mm -hmm. like so that. 
or my understanding, hydrogen cars, you can already buy hydrogen cars. The, the big yeah. thing is just hydrogen, as of right now, is more expensive than gasoline, isn't it? California. There's a region in California that have access to that, but it's the only place that I know that I heard. So yes. I, I know that it's around. I think that's just the biggest drawback as of right now is just the cost of the hydrogen. But if we could figure that out, I believe efficiency-wise, like range and like, I think that's the drawback with electric EVs, right? You got to recharge them and that takes X amount of time. That's why you stop at a gas station, you fill up three minutes and you're out. You fill up with the hydrogen, you have longer range than the EV. That's where they're coming up with the better efficiency. But I think the infrastructure right now for how they're developing the hydrogen and all this stuff, it, it's just not built up yet. So that's why it's more expensive. And just a parenthesis, this, this is how Brazilians feel about EVs. In, you know, So <laughs> what you're feeling about hydrogen is what many other countries in the world think about EVs because they don't have the basis. So you kind of have an idea what the, the world feels about that. <clears throat> well... My and and as an EV owner, how how do you think about that? Well, if they don't, what do you think? If, if they don't, if they're useless in five years, the car's going to be paid off and just trash it and buy a new one. Hydrogen, it's yeah, it's um, business. You know what I mean? I buy the car for the business. The movie Will Smith is it? Um, I Robot. Yep. So it's like all cars. You know, they're like autonomous. You don't even drive them anymore. And he goes to that one like shed warehouse that he still has and he has a gas powered uh like motorcycle mm -hmm. it's like it could be like it's the i robot you might still have a way to charge it like everybody's gonna have all these different cars somewhere you'll still have an ev that's like operable you know yeah it'd be interesting but that that is basically what i was summing up that is what it's saying so hydrogen hydrogen cars are way better than electric in terms of zero harmful emissions quick refueling and longer driving range However, they're quite expensive and inefficient with limited infrastructures. So for now, electric's more convenient. But I can, that's why it's saying, uh, you know, it's not better. It's not going to replace it in the upcoming years, maybe three years, five years. So we're talking 10, 20. I could see it replacing it. And I, and I feel like that is going to be the, the future of, of where we go. Yeah. I, really, I, I really do think that... It's going to come to a time. I don't think climate change and and greenhouse gases and all this effects are top priorities within with governments and government agencies. Probably not. They 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 could give two shits about it. Yeah. They they literally, if it became such a big deal about reversing the course of how we're polluting this this earth, some would be done as soon as possible. I mean, Hilton, you've said it multiple times. Yeah. If there's a problem, we will find a solution. Quick. The, the way, next day. The way to speed up is stop recycling and start dumping things in the ocean. Yeah. You're gonna get so messy, and then the scientists will figure it out in two months, and then five months down the line, it's all clean. Yep. It's an extreme approach, but it's probably true. It's and but that's it. Is like that's so. how it has been forever on everything. Well, the, the biggest problem also is uh, now it's going to the space. A lot of trash. I don't yeah, know if you guys see going to the space. trash. Have you seen the, the images of trash? They can see trash now. Mm. Yeah. You can see, right? So they can see the trash. There's, it's going to be a little bit harder to find a solution, <laughs> you know, because the then sun and the, the position of a lunar position is going to screw up much more than internally. Right. Right. So uh, they'll figure it out. <laughs> and that's what's actually, you know, stopping the aliens to find us. You think so? Yeah. I think the aliens have found us. I think they're just not interested. They saw like too much trash. Oh, that's that's where that's the our um, dump mm -hmm. place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like a construction. Be. Why would I ever step, you know, in this place? Oh, yeah, it's in the corners Apparently, of the universe, right? They're yeah. already here, and they've been reproducing. Vladimir Putin's really a, a lizard-type alien. We've, we've met people that tell us all sorts of things. So. Well, of course. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't I, know what to believe. I see that. Uh, I've been seeing this. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, hilarious. But I, I love it. Let me, a, let me tell you something. You're just... Uh, um, my concern about choosing the, the the type of fuel and the kind of car you, you're going to build 
it's a little bo a little bit uh, further. It's 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 harder to decide. Do I put trillions, a trillion dollars, in terrestrial cars, or in Space. five years? Huh? Yeah, like a. In five years, Space. the AI Space. will figure it out yeah. about the weight of. Um, we will be maybe we won't be driving cars. We will be actually driving drones. Yeah. Of the size of our body. Mm. A little bit bigger. So Smart you have a trillion right. dollars. You heard there's something coming. Are you? Do you spend it? I uh, know. Uh, I, I believe this is the future. I will keep that trillion dollar investment in 50 years. I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Or in 50 years, this trillion dollars is more efficient. That's what I said to you. That is going to be. It's sad to be billionaire in the wrong generation. Yeah. Because if you're being in the wrong, in the, in the right generation, you have many options to do the good. But when you don't have, what do you do with the, all the money, all the concentration? So I think that's the philosophical question that I, I would bring to that. For somebody that is going to do the investment like that, I saw an interview with Jeff Bezos. And he Stop. said that he always gets the questions of what is it going to be? In 10 years time and then he goes like I don't know how to answer that question I think you know the right question to ask is like what is it gonna be the same as of today in 10 years time because that's where you want to invest your money right as a business person you know you want something to invest your money now that you know for a fact that in 10 years time people still want to do that right so and that's why and that's the foundation of Amazon that because he said like in 10 years time People will still want to find things online. things online, cheaper, and receive it faster. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. In 10 years from now, this is going to be that. Right. In 10 years from 10 years from now, that it's going to be that. There'll so be that's new when, technologies. There'll be new things, but it's... The, but the, the idea, idea is like to maintain that business plan. Right. For civilization zero, right? <coughs> haven't they always? No. Al always <laughs> haven't they already started developing like Amazon drones to come flying and drop stuff off too? Like they're already in China to too. There, there are, but uh, the legal situation. I think all the liabilities. This is going to be the real problem. You know, um, who is responsible if one falls, uh, you know, on on someone? Because it's going to be flying. Think for a moment. No, I know. You will have to. You will AI. be walking in the streets, and this is what it's going to look like. Heavy government and regulations. But when has the government gotten anything right? Am I too crazy to mention this? <laughs> no, that's no. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, it's the same as the amount of cars on the streets. Said that's why it's one of the main reasons we don't have flying cars. It's not that they're not possible. There's the turbine. They're so loud. When a helicopter, <laughs> just one helicopter flies over, how loud is that? The rotor wash and everything? Exactly. Imagine everybody had flying cars. Exactly. Logistically, it's just not something. That's why um, he went with the, a little the drone. boring you know, tunnels. That's why he's doing the tunneling. That's very interesting what you mentioned. Have you heard about the book Freakonomics? No. There is a passage in Freakonomics. The whole chapter is dedicated why cars were created. I will find this uh, this episode in a podcast. In a, Good. In a audio book, and then I'll send it to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just give it, do it. Give, give the because the whole chapter yeah. he, he goes in details, right? Basically, cars came to save humanity. Okay. The world at that time was so desperate; they believed that shit horses would destroy the world. They took man. If you see, let's let's work together on this and look for the news from that period. They thought that shit a horse, uh, horse shit, shit. Yeah. and but you know, like all the uh, think about the, they would die in the middle. There are a hundred thousand ho horses in New York. They die. It rains. It goes to where? The, where do the how the, the water goes? The sewer, the oceans, the... and in, inside the houses. Yeah, inside the houses. Where do you, where does it go? To the basement. Yeah. And then this is why we have this 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 feeling. The basement is dangerous. Like the movies put it there, because so many people die for diseases. Uh, bites from you know insects and animals because all the shit would go and all the end you know all the infections gases would go to whatever. the house gases yeah, yeah. Into the basement, so yeah. they said you know what the car came to solve that problem 
So, based on that, based off of that, do you feel like that moving away from gas-powered motor and moving to a hydrogen-powered motor is kind of that salvation that we need in reducing our global or our impact of uh, emissions. Okay, I am 48 years old. This is George, 48, speaking. Mm -hmm. And later I'm going to talk about George with 200 years old speaking. Okay. Okay. Right now, yes, I am with the horses. I mean, with uh, I am with the cars. I mean, no, no, no. I am with the hydrogen, right? Yeah, of course. That's We need to do something, you know, to, to, to solve the situation, right? Right. Yeah. But George is 200, 200 years old. Oh no, uh, cars wouldn't, they weren't fucking us up. It was just a, an illusion. What is fucking us up is the hydrogen. Sure. We don't have it anymore. We're gonna die. Mm. So my perception 120 years later, I mean, from the car, is that... Hindsight. Oh, in hindsight, right? So, oh my God, that change was the problem. Yeah. Because, come on, do, you, does, do any of us believe that horse shit would destroy the world a little bit but not like cars not as much right. as cow shit right yeah, like methane. yeah yeah yes serious and how about our, how about us with the cars right now look look at all the these, emissions and everything the emissions and everything right now so think about a hundred years about from now private jets like uh yeah the emissions of that versus yeah i don't know they're gonna get hydrogen jets for a certain celebrity Jet from Eel? Japan to, to the United so States, the Super Bowl ah. or something, yeah, <laughs> Super Bowl or something. Oh, come on, she who shall yeah. not be named. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's uh, implications to all of these things, and as we go on, we learn more. Yes. So we don't know what we don't know. So that's actually the opposite of what he said before. You know, <laughs> because, yeah. it's getting, because it's just Sisyphus. You know what Sisyphus is? The god that always tried to trick gods, and then. In order to save his ass, he would ha he would look for a stronger god oh, to, protect and then to protect him, and then he would fucked up, and then he got to Zeus, and then Zeus saw what Wasn't he was doing. Oh. No, Sisyphus. Oh. And then he's pushing it in, in mythology. He's still pushing a rock, oh, so Zeus boulder. punished him, and he needs to he had to put the boulder. And then when he was just about to put the boulder on the top, right, Zeus cuts his uh, his uh, yeah, his power. Good. His power, oh, okay. and then he, he goes back. So he's been doing that for eternity. millennia, yeah. for eternity. So yeah. So basically, this is it, the analogy. Mm. Mm. You know, it's a good analogy. yeah. We will. I love Greek mythology. I find yeah. it very interesting. I like Nordic myth mythology. That's why I started reading Thor I and like Odin it. and all the. Hey, the if you haven't seen it yet on Disney Plus, uh, Percy Jackson and the Olympians is a really good show. They recreated the, a movie came out a while ago show on Disney Plus was completely produced and written by Rick Riordan and it follows the actual book very well and uh, it's it's a really good story like Medusa and just all the Greek mythology and stuff and it's not all of it but the story of Percy Jackson which isn't real in Greek mythology but he's adopted from Perseus but it, it's a really good show it's Kid like a Freeman, modern day yeah you can watch it with the kids and uh, it's good even for adults to watch like I enjoyed it because I was a big fan of the Percy Jackson book series yes yeah um Great. Getting called in for that sex duty, huh? Oh. <laughs> hey, don't, yeah, don't do anything crazy today. Spoken into <laughs> existence over here. Stretch. <laughs> yeah. Stretch. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do walking. anything bad today. It's going to come to work Friday. Straight. Like, oh, I'm so sore. I know. I'm so stiff. No, yeah, he's going <laughs> to sleep till midday. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna hear from him till next week. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> He's gonna come in just in the best mood. <laughs> exactly right. Yep. It'll take four there years to wear off, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> just be glowing. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so, <laughs> so we are back at leap year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's true. Oh, so true. Okay, so now you can, you can talk about yeah. leap year for a second, right? Yeah. So, so why does it take three hundred and sixty-five and a fourth days <laughs> to travel the sun? I don't know. That was God's intention. Yeah, yeah. that's Earth. <laughs> Whatever you call it. Yeah. Yes. Earth. Yeah. Earth. This is, oh. the, this is why the, this is the, the Gregorian calendar, right? 
Yes, according to the Gregorian calendar. Yeah, right. these idiots created, a, you know, the time, created how to control or how to manage the time, right? These idiots, why don't they create the right thing? <laughs> I'm just being sarcastic, but come on. Well, um... Neil deGrasse Tyson said that, um, he said that the, the very best things that um, the church created was the Gregorian calendar. <laughs> That's, 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 I yeah, saw, just because of this is, people are talking about it right now. Pope or something, right? Yeah. And then he said, well, yes. I, I don't, I don't disagree because that's the best thing. It's the, it's the thing that actually works. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know, and if it's pretty damn accurate, you know. It was proclaimed in 1582 by Pope Gregory the 13th as a reform of the Julian calendar. By the Julian reckoning, the solar year comprised of 365 and a quarter days and the intercalation of a leap day every four years was intended to maintain correspondence between the calendar and the seasons. A slight yes. inaccuracy in the measurement caused the calendar day to the seasons to regress almost one day per century. Huh. Whatever that means, right? Interesting. Take what you will from that. Yeah. <clears throat> How did they do the math to come up with it? Yes. What is the legal? What is? What they are do the... math at a time. No so math for a oh. long time. Yeah. And then we cannot even use the math if you don't have a calculator. <laughs> they created the thing, you know, back then. Well, yeah, we're we're supposed to be the smart generation. We're we're a bunch of idiots. They were closer to the aliens when the aliens populated. Oh, to be sure. fair, though, if 1 plus 1 equals 3 and they made it back then, and that's just the system we would use now. Like, we've adopted a system that they created. And besides that, we don't know the tools they used it and how long it took for them to calculate that. Maybe it took them days to calculate it, something that we calculated today with the, a Bascara. Bascara. Right. We, and we've talked about right. it before, like how the pyramids were created, all this stuff. Like I'm kind of in the camp of we were probably like a super advanced civilization and some big like cataclysm or something happened that wiped us all out. Right. And then bad. we've just restarted from like the Stone Age all over again. Because some of the stuff that they had then, how? Um, also in Peru. Have you seen? Oh, yeah. That uh, is... Machu Picchu, Machu Picchu, yeah, yes. yeah, but not even exactly. Machu Picchu, but in uh, around that, right? All of the, the whole Inca, Incas, Inks, the Inca, yeah, and Incas and Mayas, uh, Aztecs, right? Those rocks that are melted on top of each other and yes. formed to build. Mm, like, there's so you... much that makes no sense. Do you know? There's another thing that Tamides and I love is a um, a technique where you don't use it glue, we don't use it cement. You only do cement. everything with uh, somebody. We only do everything with everything with wood. Have you seen this technique? Oh yeah, yeah. The guys build how they build houses only like they don't even use like uh, any tightness. Nothing, like those nothing tightness. Nails, nails, nails. Nails. Just, like, yes. they just like joint. jointed it. Yes, and then they do it houses with thousands of people and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's been there for five hundred five hundred years. Yeah, so. That's this is maybe. also probably a reminiscence, right, of this uh, this kind of a culture laugh, you know. So, I, for all that we know, there's so much that we don't, you know, because we don't know what we don't know. And it's, there's been such a long time, yeah, that we know of in history that's been documented. It's unbelievable. Because look, it took 1,582 years for them from Jesus from Christ. Right from from the day birth, one, from yeah, the BC, yeah, yeah, from this year, it took them the to figure Christ. this out. Think about that. What think about fifteen hundred years ahead from yeah. now, you know, from yeah. now, you know. So this that is, is true. That is you a see, good point. sad wrong generation. It's um, that's what I my point again. There are a lot of things I won't He's be able to see. He's flexing again. He's flexing. What What do you mean? <laughs> No. Oh, I so we're, coming, yeah, we're yeah. coming down to a conclusion that uh, you put the idea out. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean, but I don't mean I don't mean that. Okay, the just best because it makes sense. Just <laughs> <makes> sense. <laughs> don't be humble now. Don't be humble now. <laughs> look, look up the shorts. The best shorts we have so far. It's like oh, uh, Corinne asking George. Oh, 
are you like saying that the what the was Super that? Super Bowl. Yeah, about because he predicted, he predicted the Super Bowl. And He's a like, mass predictor. Yeah, you're, you're saying that the shout out of the of the Super of the football season it's to you then, and then, and then George is like, yeah, I think so. <laughs> 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 it's the best one. It's like every time he plays. And then three just, languages. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't care about me speaking three languages. <laughs> yeah. A polyglot. Yeah. Right? Doesn't make any difference. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's sad. It's sad. I won't see a lot of progress. Progress that I would love to see. That my mind produces my 100 tabs opened. You know, when we talk about the topics here, right? Just. I like it though. It's fun though. Yeah. Exactly. So I do not understand well, one thing about um, why is it so more efficient than than um, fossil kind of fuel? Why is it hydrogen? Yes. Do you guys know how it works? Because I didn't. I didn't grasp that. I didn't grasp how the whole thing works. You know, that would be great. Is that would be great to, to know. Combustibility or something? I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to look it up. Well, so I do know that father-in-law would know. Yeah. He's all into that kind of stuff, yeah. Wow. We should have him on. That would be great. And again, this is an idiot talking. I, I, I'm i just pulling out shit that I think is probably the thing is. Um, I mean, the accessibility of hydrogen. Hydrogen and water. It's easily... Converted. Converted. You can easily convert it into... I don't know if it's easy, because you got to do like... you got to break it down, right? My, that's... Yeah, exactly. That's the whole infrastructure thing, but it might, that's what my father-in-law talked about. We could build a thing to make that system quicker. Like, everybody has access to water at home that you could convert into liquid hydrogen. So that's, well, and so that's the thing is, like, obviously going to a pure hydrogen, the form that they years. want to, the, the hydrogen form that they want to do in this. Uh, I had been saying that, from that podcast and from you know what everyone else knows there was that and i don't i can't remember his name but he built a hydrogen motor that could run off of water where you could literally put a gallon of water and you can drive all the way from new york to los angeles on one gallon of water it's like you could spit into the tank and use the, the moisture from your spit to drive your vehicle you could put it's a snowball extreme, in it. but yeah I, I i could believe it <clears throat> so stanley it, meyer Stanley Meyer, and then, yeah. He built a water fuel cell from Wikipedia, the greatest source of information. Oh, yeah, I trust it. <laughs> <laughs> you make it we so trust. created a water yeah. fuel cell, a non-functional design for a start somewhere, I guess. machine. He claimed that a car retrofitted with a device could use water as fuel instead of gasoline. His claims of the water fuel cell in the car that it powered were found to be fraudulent, however, by an Ohio court in 1996. Of course it was. Here's his circuit for all of you smart guys that watch this podcast. <clears throat> Please comment. Tell us what this means. I don't know. But hydrogen but hydrogen is, isn't far off of this. It's just breaking down water. It's breaking down water and and using hydrogen the hydrogen oxygen. as uh, as as a fuel source. Yeah. Right? And it says it's cleaner, right? It's supposed to be cleaner. Well all that and will come out of the exhaust. Zero. Zero emissions. There's zero, zero emissions. emissions. It's just water. Yeah, when it comes out to the pipe, it's water. It's, water. it's just water. Is you, it need, you need a waterproof exhaust pipe, though. Chrome. Uh, this is <laughs> a, yeah, you a, would have to. I mean, yeah, because that's a good point. Just though. line. You do an inner lining of something that's hydrophobic. You mentioned that um, it's already available, right, in some parts, but it's because it's it's, a, it's a expensive. Yeah. But is it the, the cash you need to situation? Like, it's too expensive because there is no scale, but there's no scale because... There's no demand. Yes. there The demand isn't, the market isn't there yet. Right, because, <laughs> or there are forces that... Because now we have... Yeah, the, lobby and... We have two lobbies now, for, yeah, right? For, we have EVs, lobby, lobbies, and you have, like, the but let fossil me tell you fuel this. lobbies. But let me have tell you two. this. I just uh, did the tag in my car, and I had to pay an extra... Two hundred dollars. That's because my car is EV. Right. And Texas saying that well, you drive your car, you don't buy gas, so there is no income from 
you to the state on gas, so you have to charge you two hundred dollars. Yep. To license the car. Yeah, but Texas is the only state that does that. Yeah. Well, there might be one other, but. But yeah. that's this this year because last year didn't have that with right. the other car. Interesting. So there are as of. 2021, it might be different now than we're in 2024. As of 2021, there were two hydrogen cars publicly available in select markets, so not everywhere. Select Toyota? Markets, a Toyota and a Hyundai. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> scroll down a little bit. Average cost per gallon is about $16 a gallon for hydrogen. So then that made me think, well, how far can you drive on a gallon? Yes. Does it say there? If you um, go to hydrogen... I pulled to- another tab open. So a car with a hydrogen internal combustion engine can achieve an average of 62 MPGe2. Therefore, based on these estimates, a car with a hydrogen fuel cell can go about 152 miles on one gallon of hydrogen gas, while a car with hydrogen internal combustion engine can go about 62 miles on one gallon. So, cost sixteen dollars, but six sixty-two miles to the gallon. So uh, that's uh, just two and a half times. Is that right? One is 152, the other one is 62. Correct? Um, it's a little bit, yeah, it's, it's more than double. So, yeah, a little bit yeah. over 2.5. 2.5. Right, so a gallon is $4. That would be 30. Yeah, so a gallon is $4. So, so that would be like $10. So, yeah. you're talking about 10 times 16. Is, do you agree with me? Yeah. To ride 152 miles, a car with a fossil fuel would need $10. Well, let's just think what, I mean, yeah. What's a. Yeah. In the United States, it's, a, it's about ten dollars, but yeah, the thought process. Ten yeah. versus sixteen. Yeah, that's exactly. Me. That's so what it costs. Yeah, the comparison is, is right there. I mean, it's not that much more expensive. Because but, yeah, yeah, I wanted to bring this because sometimes you see all those numbers and then you don't figure it out. But when you have one unit, ten to sixteen is sixty percent. Yeah, and that's, a, that's what it is. An average North American mid-sized car. On average, is about twenty-one miles per gallon. Okay, so it's a little and bit that, more. And that yes. gallon, we'll say here in Texas is different where you're at. Here in Texas, roughly, let's call it three dollars, just to make it easy. Yes. To travel twenty-one. Yes. So times three to make it sixty on the That's hydrogen right. internal combustion, it would be nine dollars versus yes. sixteen. So yes. it is more expensive That's to run right. hydrogen. Right. You see? Considerably more expensive to run hydrogen, but that's because of the infrastructure. If we figure that out. We could, make and that's in California, oh, right? So where, California is five dollars a gallon. I think. Exactly. So yeah. you, you it do. depends where you live. Exactly. And, yeah. You know, there is a city, which is a Toyota city, uh, and every single car driven in that city is hydrogen. Okay. Because Toyota, Toyota has invested on hydrogen cars, and they believe it's the future yep. since ever. Yes. Since you know the inception of it's actually true. before they started doing the, the Prius, they had the hydrogen. The thing is, what Elon Musk did with the infrastructure for electric vehicles is like he knew because he saw what Toyota was doing, right? Because that city, you can try and pull it up uh, on, on the Toyota hydrogen city. That city has been there forever as in uh, well for a long time as in conception so he saw that it's like it's not going to work worldwide if if i don't make the infrastructure so he invested not, not only on the cars but he invested in the infrastructure he built up the 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 he, network of charging stations right infrastructure that's why tesla exactly. is what it is right yes he's, so he built the infrastructure yeah if if Toyota also invested money on making hydrogen stations for refueling, and then, yeah, we'd have, and actually that's actually a very, very good thing because we know competition, right? It's good for every single business yeah. and for the end consumer. Yes, right? especially for you. So, so mm-hmm. now we have, um, we have two lines of power source Right, we have electric power source and we have um, com- uh, internal combustion power source. Right, if we also have hydrogen as a power source, we have a third player in the market. So the price of everything is going to go down to be competitive. To be competitive, to yeah. say no, no, buy a gas powered car, and then you know all the people are going to say no, no, buy an electric powered car, and then so uh, it would be a beneficial as society 
for everybody. I agree. And let the society figure out which what they want. What they want. What they want. <clears throat> what makes more sense to them. Like, for example, the electric cars from me to work makes more sense. But the car that we use for the family, that we want to go longer distances or not, not it's gas. It's gas. It's gas. Yeah. But we would have a second option. Right. For that mice. Right. Okay, no, I'm okay. Yeah. We would have a... We would have options, right? Right, right. To say now, you also have hydrogen. So instead of going and buying a gas power car, I could choose to get the hydrogen if the infrastructure, it would be there for recharging it, you know, per se. Well, if, filling up a, a hydrogen tank takes about the same time it does to fill up a gas tank. Yes. It takes about three minutes. Yes. So that whole mm-hmm. process, that whole Logistically. Stigma, mm-hmm. Logistics, yeah. Mm-hmm. You could have a refill station like a gas station. But you can go the step ahead. Like there is a guy in in Espírito Santo, Brazil, that in 2006 he had a like a Fiat Uno. <laughs> he had a Fiat Uno yes, that he own. had like a water thing. I don't know if that is a mimic kind of thing. Uh, that he had like a, a gas tank, you know, kind of hidden, um, and then he would pull water in it and then work, you know, uh, uh, turn the car on. But there was like, it was on, on the news and everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, that was in 2006. So it was like, just like, as you're saying, put water in it. So the car would have to have like a substation kind of thing that would break the water into hydrogen that would then transform into water again because, you know, that's that's how it would be. Well, and that's, and, and I mean, and I, and, and that's what I'm trying to point out is that. Toyota and all of, all of these makers are making hydrogen specific vehicles that break down hydrogen being introduced and put into the motor, right? If you had a motor that was able to break down water or other substances and extract that and and make hydrogen, which is already proven from this other guy that we were, you know, that died that we were looking up, the Brazilian guy. So this it is a proven, it is a proven thing. Mm-hmm. Like it can happen. Mm-hmm. It, it the technology is out there. So that's it. I mean, it, it all comes back to is like one market infrastructure, and two, how serious are people really about protecting it and changing the course of their pollution and their habits? You know, because. But again, it would be like instead of having a uh, internal combustion combustion motor, you would have to be like a power station that would transform you know water into a hydrogen to have the combustion somehow and then power the wheels right so and then how but that's what they're doing now that's what i'm saying is toyota and, and all these companies are doing now is they're extracting the hydrogen and then you are putting hydrogen and filling up your tanks with hydrogen yeah as opposed to having a motor taking the hydrogen from water or other substances and then converting it into uh, an energy source. Yeah, yeah. Look, um, I like that the, the thing you said about the different different folks, different strokes. You know, like for different reasons, you have um, different cars or different options. types of fuel yeah. options, right? Uh, uh, that l- reminds me that this this goes according to our necessity. Oh, I that's what you said, right? So I need well, this this is cheap. It's better, whatever. However, we have on the other side, the imposition of the companies, right? Deciding, you know, like forcing us to make a trade-off. So uh, think about how bad it was for public transportation or railroads, roads when the cars came. Like who decided if it's so much more efficient? Who decided that we have to, to, to build so many roads where... <laughs> the government. Yeah, exactly, right? So the government, you see, interfering. Uh, is that, would that be the best way the most, like, say, um, um, in terms of organization, the best synergy possible, only roads or actually parts of this investment on roads were invested in, 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 ra- in railroads. Maybe it would have, we would be today way more efficient than we are today. So yeah. because of cars existed, right, before, but all of these other possibilities were killed. I read something about that not too long ago, like uh, like in the Northeast, like New York to Chicago and other areas in Detroit, like 
Michigan. You could have hyper rails that you could get to those places in 30 minutes or so, but we developed so heavily in roads. That, yeah, exactly to your point. You see? And that goes to my point about the wrong generation. But, Flexing again. <laughs> Flexing again. No, no, no. no. It is like, this guy, you had a great idea. It's the name it's of the a, episode. It's the a flex of George. Yeah, rare. <laughs> it's going to be me like, <laughs> yeah, that's gonna you be know, like, like <laughs> with a papaya, oh, uh, like a spinach going on. Yeah, there, there you go. Uh, because <laughs> these guys are so fucked up, man. They, they had a, they had a the vision. Wow, this is gonna be perfect with the you know with the roads and everything. Right, but there was also the movement you have to consider also. The movement after the Great Depression was moving away from big cities and urbanizing, getting out into the country, getting out of the big city and out of that metropolis. You cannot have trains transporting you or public transportations if you live outside of big cities. I'm like and a road lobbyist. Well, I'm just, <laughs> exactly. I know, I know but I'm, I'm, I'm playing devil's like, ad, I'm yeah, playing devil's advocate. I see your point. Devil's advocate. You have that both. I see, yeah. I see you your point, but uh, it just uh, makes me think during this period, because there is a period here where all these things are being considered. Which one is going to survive? And roads survived. Right. Uh, now we are have, we have the hydrogen, we have the EVs, and you have fossil, right? We, we, can, we can still use fossil for, I don't know. 300 years? Sure. Yeah, we can use it. So now we have three options. Well, the more options, options we add, the longer the fossil fuels will last. That's true. true. We'll, so you we'll, don't... we'll move away from fossil fuels, use it less and less. Less and less. But, still but, but it still could still be an option. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Depending on, like, let's say you need power, but you don't need uh, um, immediate power. You need, like, on a reduction speed kind of power. And then, you know, it's better Look, to use fossil fuel because it's uh, it's it's less efficient in delivering power because you don't want the, the wheels to spin. You want it to actually the wheels to to, to to run slow. Right. Like for like carrying heavy stuff and, and whatnot. Um, Instead of having to work pulleys and whatnot, right? To make it, you know, okay, I'll just use this lot of energy. But I'm moving slower, but I'm still using a lot of energy because I had to compensate or decompensate. Right. No, absolutely. Jill, I know you're looking for something there. What was that? Oh, it just made me think of like another type. I know Shell at one point was looking into like bioalgae as a fuel source, but I did a quick Google. They exited that market. So they they stopped their pursuit of bio bioalgae as okay. like a fuel source. I don't bio know why. Diesel. <laughs> yeah, biodiesel. Well, it's still, it's still yeah. exists biodiesel. Mm -hmm. Shell, in particular, stopped. They were trying to research algae and the use of that as a power source, but I guess it didn't work. Regarding lobby, you mentioned. Okay, so this is not a conspiracy. I just want to ask. I just want to ask you on on your point. Um, the Saudis, for example, right? So they don't want this sort of a market to lose so much ground in the United States and Europe or whatever. So don't you think they also have this lobby to, you know, like against the, the railroads, right? So it's a strong hobby against them. You know, like I would be investing. Uh, I remember a, fr a friend of mine who had a taxi back in Brazil and to have a license is super expensive, right? To, have, to get a license like $100,000, it's like $200,000. And he had 14 taxes. So he's got like $3 million in, you know, in, in licenses. And then he said, I have 14 taxes, taxes, or if this Uber come, he uh, told me, I cannot say his name, but he told me, I would sell two or three cars and I will use it this money to create havoc against yeah. Uber. So this guy says, I'm willing to sacrifice 15 20 percent of my business to cause a havoc because with this money i can with an advertisement you can create a lot of problems right, right. so if this guy who had 14 taxes barely a criminal right <laughs> to, to, to propose that and i don't know if you know but in brazil they tried to kill uber drivers and everything. i remember that i remember where it was like a very big, big now i think everywhere uber. now what would the saudis do to so, maintain that what would the Russian do with the with the gas? 
what would what would North America do? Because America it's, is one of the biggest producers of oil in the exactly. world as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. I didn't buy, I didn't buy it from us then. Well, but, but to that point, and that was another topic, was that all of these heavy investors into it, they invest billions into pipelines, into oil reserves, and what's been happening? Closing it down. You can't do it. We don't want the environmental impact. We don't want you fracking. fracking. We yeah. don't want you yeah. doing any of that stuff. So these billionaires are now looking at these investments and going, mm. where do we put our money that's going to come, you know, reinvest back into us? Because oil is not the future. Oil is not the future at all because everything they do, they try and do, mm -hmm. it gets shut down. Yes. Well, let me let me ask Marijuana. you. This. Yeah, but let me ask you this question Hemp. then. Hemp. Hemp. Yeah. But just keep me on the same line of thinking. Why? And now I'm it, again. It's not a protection or anything because I don't care, right? <laughs> but why people demonize? Uh, Elon Musk a lot when he is the one that actually like I don't care for the lobby interest I'm doing it I'm doing the infrastructure and everything for the good that he believes is the good for for everybody but people go like well that stupid guy you know he's trying to do that he's actually creating something that will help everybody because competition makes things cheaper for everyone. Well, it's like if you don't have haters, you're not doing something right. You know? Well, and when you think about it, it's like the Biden's whole thing when he got into office was the <clears throat> Build Back Better program and he wanted to invest how many billions of taxpayer dollars into electricity, electric vehicles and electric infrastructure. You know where any of that money went to? Ukraine. It went, Well, one, it went to Ukraine. <laughs> but two, it went into Elon Musk's already propped up infrastructure. I have not. Have you? Have you driven past? It should a, be. It should be giving it's some of the other companies opportunities, right? Well, but that's the point. Is yeah. is have you seen a Shell gas station with an electric uh, electric no. pump? Have you seen an Arco? Any other place? No. Bucky's has it. Bucky's, but it's Tesla private, infrastructure. It's not private. Oh, but it's a Tesla. Tesla's at Bucky's. So that's the. So there you go. Yeah, it's yeah, um, an know, agreement. Yeah. My, they made an agreement. My yeah. question is: This uh, Tesla's competitor from China. Will, oh. the, will the cars? Will BYD. those cars be? Uh, yeah. What's that? BYD. BYD. Uh, will they be able to use that infrastructure? Tesla. I don't know. They they sell more than Tesla because China's such a because big Because all fuel fossil fuel cars they share, right? So the the cars made they share the same. You don't believe that? Well, I, I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I see what you're saying. But when you when you made the comment like BYD sells more than Tesla, the thing is, you've seen those you've seen those markets. Obviously, any information that comes out of China is very hard to believe because you've seen those He's done his, electric um, vehicle graveyards. I did my right? senior project on it. He's done his oh, senior yeah? project on it. He heavily investigated it. it it's, it's shocking. The but <laughs> depending on what you're going to ask. But yes. OK. Because I was going to say, I've, th it's been it's been revealed how China will put out and say that they've sold all of these electric vehicles, but it's just in a it's in a graveyard. It's basically okay. just miles of propping just, stuff up. Yeah, to... propping stuff up to say like, oh, BYD, this you know this big company has ah, been see, selling millions see, and millions I of see. cars, but then when you go to the, I mean, they have miles of just an open lot of these vehicles just sitting there, not doing just anything. to generate a spontaneous marketing. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, so the this, numbers. This is um expensive, right? It, it could be, yeah. <laughs> so what you're talking about, but this was as of uh, the quarter ending of 2023. So Tesla's outperformed over and over and over and over. And going into 2023, uh, this quarter in particular, the first quarter, second quarter of 2023, Tesla has produced more vehicles ever. They in that quarter they produced almost 500,000, right? Finally, at the, the fourth quarter of last year, BYD surpassed. It's three so years back, my, right? Three years back, yes. It so goes three yeah, years back to 2021, back. all the way up to 20. At the time of my senior project, we were here. We were, were here, really. They, they were just coming up, but I've kept track of it. And at this point, as far as what they're reporting, right. so you're right in that I don't know how they're twisting numbers or they're making these cars and what they're doing with them, where they're going if they sit in a graveyard. But yeah, they... Uh, 
absolutely have mm-hmm. started surpassing in terms of sales. So Ooh, if they have their own private people buying them and then just shelving them to make the numbers go up, I can't speak on that. Right. But their sales have gone up. Because we could uh, we could say the same thing about Tesla. True. We could the same I don't thing. Know. I mean, there are more evidences that we have more access here that Tesla is doing is not doing that because we have more information, right? right? What I would say though is I remember like even in high school when Teslas were coming out and someone had a Tesla and you're like, oh wow, you didn't see them, you know? You can't drive anywhere and not see a Tesla. Yeah, true. They're thirty percent. Even cyber trucks now. Every day I see one. I see a cyber truck every day. Well, maybe not every day, but every week I see a cyber truck. I saw one today when I went. I well, saw one on supposed s- to be Sunday. where the plan is. I know it tends yeah. to have more, I think. Yeah, one I saw one yesterday yeah. on the way into Trinity. That is true. Yeah. That is true. Mm-hmm. But there is one thing as well that I have to Austin. say on that, on the on the, the selling thing. For example, if you, if, you, if you buy a Tesla on a lease, if you buy it all right, and then, and then yes. But if you buy it on a lease, actually when the lease is up like three years lease for example you cannot buy it you don't have an option to buy oh, you okay. have to give it back you have to give the car back if and you're then, leasing through tesla yeah weird why would they do something like i don't that? know it's their lease program doesn't have the option to buy or the buy car out. so you gotta send the car back and then get a new one or either buy or lease it again interesting we, we have a friend that uh Does that do with the battery i don't know <clears throat> We have a friend that he he just had to get get a new one on the lease. Shout out Spock. because he didn't yeah he yeah, didn't yeah, have yeah. Uh, the option to buy. Huh? Yeah. Interesting. So he's been having that for he's been driving Teslas for three more than three three years, years. Three years. and then oh, no, and no, then now great. he replaced it with a brand new one. Actually, I mean if he can pay the monthly payment, better right? And he now he's with a brand new model that has a little bit more features and stuff. And it's Let pretty me nice. tell you miles on the battery. Yeah. So. It all Zero depends. Miles. It all depends on how the uh, the yeah. depreciation happens of, of, of the car. You know, I, I don't, I've never seen the, I've never tried to buy a, a a Tesla, so I haven't seen the you know the, how I would structure that. You know, because I structure based on. Well, the know, company. How, how much you, you man? Because you buy a car, there's a depreciation, but oh, because right. it's, it's harder to see the depreciation of the car. You know, we don't see the depreciation. Right, we feel it when you. Only when you need to, to, to when buy you the car. When you're going to change it out. Yeah. Yeah. Let, me give you, let me give you a, a business perspective on that. So we've, um, eight years ago, we've discussed, eight, nine years ago, we discussed a lot about installing wood floors, solid wood floors planks, um, just like locking them together and not gluing them down. And then after five years of, I think, what we did like oh let's see five years and let's see 10 years and let's see 15 years and 20 years so like you could get uh like a monthly payment like a lease and then in so many years time we'd go take the floors up and put new floors in into the house right because it's easier if it's locked if it's locked in it's just lifted no yeah you basically. can you can remove it uh the floor right because it's not glued down right so you can remove it uh without destroying the floor Right, okay. because it's wood. So, you know those plastic ones. No, they break. Yeah, they break. But the wood one, it would be okay. And then we'd like remove the floors, right? Take it to the fra- the factory, renew them, and resell them. Yeah. So what Tesla could be looking at if they're not doing that, the leasing, unless they started doing that right now. But when he did it three years ago, he didn't have the option, right? And he had to give the car back and then get a new car. Now, just like three months ago. So let's say the what well, Tesla might be looking at in the markets like I can actually ship this car to a different market where they cannot afford buying a brand new Tesla, but they can afford buy a three years old Feed Tesla. Uh, second market. So they could be looking into that. Like he, that. I, wow. Knowing the business savviness of that yeah. company, yeah. I wouldn't doubt they're doing something like because we investigated on that being a very small factory of wood floors otherwise like especially the older ones like they're you know one hundred and twenty thousand miles that, on it. what else do you do with um it? you go some of the gave up to like a today brazil or something you know, I don't know but they don't have the infrastructure for charging oh, 
You know what I mean? But yeah, once the infrastructure is there, is there, and he, they could potentially just like it's a way of fix some module of the of the battery if they are like, oh, this battery is like this little piece, and they just change that. It's cheap to change in the factory. Yeah, you know, and then Refurbish. they fix the car, refurbish the car, and then send it. You know, people do that with iPhones. You know what I mean? Yeah. All the used iPhones go everywhere. So you're talking about Apple? Giant. Yeah, um, Apple yesterday announced that they will stop with this e their their EVs Apple production car. yeah and then really? yeah then today there's a spat that. between a Apple and, and uh, Elon Musk Elon Musk just made fun of them and then they answer something back oh know, interesting yeah. so yeah so I uh, saw the an article about how they canceled it and they, yeah they're not they're not moving forward they want to fo like focus on the spatial computing that's what they said <laughs> yeah. well I, they'll probably make more money in that well but will. it's always like that. Um, also, there is a, a savvy businessman um, from Brazil that I follow, and he was he goes like, "What should I do first for my company? Let's say you have a flooring company, right? Should I start offering a different type of flooring because I already have my market, you know, geared towards a type of customer? Yes. Or should I start offering doors? It makes more sense. It's cheaper to offer a different type of flooring. Right." You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's much cheaper because all the infrastructure is there than creating a brand new thing. <clears throat> how many interviews have, have you seen where Elon Musk talks about how difficult and it keeps him up at night dealing with the infrastructure and manufacturing of, of vehicles, of Tesla? He said it's, it's more difficult than his SpaceX. Yep. SpaceX, he's like, I, that's, that's where I go to enjoy my life. Tesla is where he goes to like die, get stressed. If you're making stressed like a, a project car or something, it's no problem. But that's it was the infrastructure and in creating the a way to produce that many cars and all yeah. the charging stations. That's what was so difficult. And people think he's evil. He's Man, making I'll something, tell you something um, to bring competitiveness. When you are that big, when you are that big, people are lizards. You know, right? Like his they people think the sky's Who? Miss, yeah, Elon, uh, Musk Elon Musk and all his companies, right? So uh, sometimes, in order to get a bigger price, a bigger price, you have to invest in something smaller. Maybe Tesla is this small thing. I I will tell you why. There's a story of uh, the Saudis. They tried to to build. I don't know if you know, but it, to buy property in Spain, you need you need like. 1,000 licenses and the I think the the royal family have to approve and also it's very hard to buy product uh, to buy um, property property if you're not Spanish okay okay so in Malaga so this Saudis want to buy all the properties possible in in the shores but they wouldn't right so they bought the club they bought the club the Malaga club and they said we would bring bring the best players in the world so they spent five, six, ten years with the team. The team got to Champions League. The, ch the team actually did very well. But after ten years, they start. They had the license. Oh, if you do that for the city, you can buy property. So but they use a long plan. It's a yeah, long. Okay. okay, so maybe the real money that Elon Musk wants is space. It's for the space. The real company is a space and Tesla. Just okay. No, if you want to get this. First, help us with the car situation here. Right. So it might be. I'm, I'm, I'm just speculating. Okay, just speculation. But this. Could I think be... it's a good speculation because he's always said his ultimate goal is to get to Mars. You see. And what's what's the name of his main? Is it Falcon? The Falcon. Falcon X. Or X. Yeah. He's just recently I saw him on X because he bought it. He's on it all the time. Um, it just carried its heaviest payload. Like they just keep improving that motherfucker. So. Well, the fact that you could. I mean, <clears throat> that's what I'm saying is like, going back to the conspiracies, like, how did we land on the moon when NASA can't, hasn't done anything in the past 60 years, you know, and now... People think we never went to the moon. Well, it, I mean, anymore, when you think about it, it's like, how did we, back in the 60s, have the technology to fly to the moon and land and let people walk on it, but yet... NASA hasn't improved or done a single thing. Funding, it's six I guess. One of the situations. It's a government funded yes. program. But we, it was like they the get, Cold War era. It was like this nationalism of like, we have to beat Russia. you know. And then we did it. And it was like, well, what's the point? Um, um, let me tell you. Yeah. I, I don't want to explain that because I don't, 
I'm not Watch for technician all expert on that. But one thing is like the human beings have been done that for a long time, right? So you, you find you find something. Let's say that the um, let's say the barbarians, okay, the Vikings find America, right? But it killed so many people yeah. in the process, or they will never went back. So it took three, four hundred years. I don't know, a thousand years since someone took the courage and went there. Okay, so it's I think it has to do with return. They went there, they saw, you know what? There's we will need to it's just like making Marvel movies in the sixties versus making Marvel movies now. Sixty years later, you can you can do Doctor Strange, Thanos and Galaxus. But at that time would would look so silly. Right. Avatar. Huh? How long it took them to what do you conceptualized Avatar the movie. Avatar. Where he could feel confident in the way it looked on the screen. You know, he just the technology wasn't there. No. So I it's not to explain to that, but I think it gives an idea that okay, so there are we can explore that. And it's easily explorable or it's uh, I don't know, uh, geographically it's uh, it's advantages for war. Okay, I think At that's that a, that's a big incentive to see. Okay, to be there. Do you, How about in, uh, uh, in our own planet? Do you Antarctica. have uh, Apple TV? How about Antarctica? Yeah. Why don't we actually? Oh no, if there's so much this. Why don't everybody move there? Okay, let's explore wow. that because it's hard. It's really hard and expensive. Do, right. you, do you have Apple TV? Mm-hmm. Any, I had. Yeah. I can give you my login. There's there's a show called For All Mankind. There's four seasons yes. out now. Yes. Uh, have you watched it? Yeah. I, I moved it's to it's that. based on like the idea of like what if Russia beat us to the moon, and there was this war, but more Part so of just story. like. Yeah. The Cold War never finished. It was always progressing. Because yes. we were in space competition race. with each other. So we yes. never stopped investing in it. So by the yes. 90s, there's like a space hotel. So it's like it's what was important at the time. So they probably right. allocated way more funding than was necessary yes. to do that. Where now it's like, oh, we need to focus on X, Y, and Z. Right yeah, now. you had to do that ah, that's true. in order yeah. for the the American economy to be the stronger today. It was a pissing contest, years on. truly. Yes. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, well, and it, NASA was defunded for a while. You know? Yes, yeah. we have funding now, but yeah, they de- the, the International Space Program, co-owned by us and Russia, and all. They, nobody wanted to put all the money into that because of what they felt like was the return on it. You know, that, that's my opinion. I that's heard. a good example. No, that is a yeah. It is for a, example. Is a valid point. We have uh, the Virgin Media guy. Yeah, uh, we have uh, Elon Musk, and we have Jeff Bezos working on spacecraft. Right? right, so that now it's competition. So it's it, it's back now. NASA is back into having more funding to do stuff. Right, right. And they have the options of working and collaborating with, with other those. people with yeah. Elon. Musk but there's more people Elon. trying to do it. There's right. More people trying to do <laughs> if it. Right. Elon is motivated to go to Mars. Yeah. Is smoothly talking about that um, about fuels, right? So what kind of fuel do this? Um, <laughs> what did he use? Rocket, rocket fuel. So I don't let, let I don't have to look it up. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, uh, hydrogen. I mean, imagine if they have a powerful enough hydrogen cell. Well, rocket fuel. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't question. know. RP one rocket grade petroleum consists of highly refined kerosene mixed with liquid oxygen. Oxygen is extremely what. Combustible, Combustible, flammable. Yes. So hyperboles are able to self-ignite on contact between the fuel and the oxidizer. So yeah, I, I was wondering that too. Like, we get enough advanced with liquid hydrogen, maybe the it, output of it, it is fuses with oxygens, this. and that's why when it becomes water into the pot, that's that's that's, that's the, process, the, the right? principle. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Uh, See, and also it, it could also it could all be a decoy from Elon, and then he's investing in something else that we don't know. You know, there's so many. If you if you want to speculate, right? But you see conspiracies. It might, you know, he might be into something that we don't know. In the because you know, like, when you have money available, Hydrogen's so much money available, dangerous. In the form of gas, hydrogen's dangerous. Yes, it's very highly combustible. Yes, combustible, I, and that's and one has of to be highly cons. pressurized in those can, wherever they. So it's like and, trying. And, we, it's got to be liquid. Well, and that's it. Is and that's one of the cons of hydrogen is that if 
you were in a car and got into an accident. I think you had that earlier, Coles, right? Boom. Now. Yeah, earlier. I, yeah. Sometimes with too many tabs open, it's a little slow. But it, uh, you know, highly combustible, highly flammable. So, I mean, that's another it's part of it. It's a little dangerous. It is a little dangerous. And the form of gas. But yeah. I think the process, that's the infrastructure. So, you know, like, do you have cars here that they, they convert in the back for gas? I mean, Brazil was very common for a while. <laughs> Remember that? Oh, Marcelo uh, has. Propane? Huh? Propane? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, remember yeah. that? They could... All Marcelo has. They Marcelo has that. Really? Brazil, yeah. And so... A propane car? Yeah. Propane he would, like, car. He'd like flip a switch and it would go from gas into a... Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. It would petrol gas. Yeah. Petrol gas to something else. And it yeah, would yeah if, you're using, if you're running low on propane, you can just put it in the back. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
painting your car because your car is exposed six hours a day for the sun versus, <laughs> exactly versus how much you're gonna save it you know it's all about in the end i want to see but by the end of the history of That's the car the how much I, expense, uh, I spend this and how much you spend yours counting everything yeah Hilt, if you have solar on your roof the problem one of the main problems with solar is all the light comes in but you don't capture it all a lot bounces out so out of what it's how much what's the number that they percentage, do? Of percentage of captures because i put more than what my house consumes um summertime i you know i can have spring and autumn is better Summertime, because you have the, the my house is not that very efficient, so I I have I still have to pay, and winter time uh, also I still have to pay because there's but not enough sun. That's because of the capability of the actual solar panels themselves, like yeah. the actual absorption of yes. the light. And what it's like, I don't know what the percentage is. I guess I could look it up, but I want to say it's like seventy percent. It's less than it's like thirty percent or well, something. Mm -hmm. It's small. They, if they could rebuild it away where it's like the refracted light that bounces back up brings Retain it back down more. Boom, 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 bounce it back down so we need to make them more efficient like what uh, i've looked it up before it was part of my uh, research a lot of, with tesla yeah there are a lot of panels that we start having more and better technology um you still have to supplement um unless you have a lot of land that you can put a lot of solar panels and then you can you could be off off the grid right um, so, as of today, monocrystalline solar panels are the most efficient with 15 to 22 percent real okay. world efficiency ratings. That's today in 2024 the most efficient solar panels. Are. What if we had solar panels that were absorbing 100 percent of the light that they're receiving, 80 percent? You know, so if, if we could improve upon that, the design, the way all the reflect the refracted light leaving, find a way to capture it. It's like a a problem there. you have to find a way where it bounces in and everything gets captured and brought back in if we could do years. that then maybe yeah some way to keep the light in combination with light and heat because the light also heats it it's yeah, the problem true. of solar panels as of today are just not efficient enough but if they were a solar powered car could be the future but that is, with our design of what we have with solar panels they're just not capable the formula one right uses the kinetic energy recovering system mm -hmm. which is from the braking and that's from heat correct so if you combine solar and heat and then you'd have a little bit more right. but again it, it takes it, it takes development you know it takes development yeah so i don't even know enough about this to even talk this would be another podcast that there, there's somebody trying to invest in what they call like a quantum glass battery um and there's that, that's one thing if you're looking for something in the future to invest in do a lot of research in that which this, one uh, quantum glass batteries did you guys listen to that if you know anything please comment on this and type of uh, a yeah. solid state battery using glass electrolyte lithium sodium metal electrodes um actually from a senior research university of texas Ah, there's a lot of information. This goes above my head. I'm not the right person to inform right. you about it. But just do some research on it. Maybe we could talk about this on another podcast that's when awesome. we've all researched a little bit more on it. Um, that's something of the future that I've been hearing a lot about. This is why the this kind glass. of topic always opens up for so many oh, others, yeah. right? Oh, so yeah. uh, I I don't have a transition for that yet, but we should have the bottle of the wheels, right? <laughs> there you go. Uh, Formula uh, One is back, is back in the calendar. I don't know if you guys have been watching it. And I want to see what is your prediction for this week's race. It's going to be Saturday here in Texas at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Is the nice is is the one the of race the nicest? Isn't here. No, no. It's one of the nicest race in the calendar, which is a night race. In and Bahrain. It's the opening and it's in Bahrain. It's very nice. Um, but it will be um, opening. It'll be Saturday 6 p.m. local time in Bahrain. That puts it at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time in, in Texas. So you, we can watch it at 9 a.m. But it, um, there will be a race. I believe it's in October at Coda in Austin, Texas. Yeah. Um, so we know that we should all go. It's expensive, but I would love to. We should yeah. all go at least for the you know for the trainings, you know for the trainings, and for you know like the maybe Friday or Saturday. 
because go Sunday, go Sunday and see the actual race. Yeah. <laughs> I know that Max Verstappen probably is going to win, so who's going to be second, right? <laughs> yeah, Checo, <laughs> Sergio Perez. I'm going to go with Hamilton, or maybe Charles Leclerc. Hamilton. Talking about Verstappen, uh, what do you think of this drone? The fastest no, drone. No, I don't want to talk about the drone. I want to talk about the Formula One. <laughs> okay. Because we are wrapping up the podcast. I think All right. We're being one hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> If you like this episode, tune in next week. And we're going to dive into the world of Formula One. Yeah, yes. and then the drone thing. You know, yeah, we'll talk about the yeah, drone. Yeah, we'll do that. Because it's amazing. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah, it is, it is. I love it. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll talk about That'll be your little teaser for next yeah. week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, so who is your pick? I mean, Microsoft is probably going to win. So. Yeah, I, man, you you guys know me, right? You're the master predictor. You guys know me. No, it's just the case of... Uh, oh, go, yeah. Gonna, no, 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 no. Master no. flexor. Who's going to win the constructors? <laughs> <laughs> who's going to win the driver's championship? No, I... Red Bull versus I, I, You see, I haven't been following, but I just... You don't even need to. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm saying, you know, like all the fuss and... Again, man, this sport needs heroes, you know, new heroes, new... So, uh, I'm I, I'm more and more into that. Carlos Sainz Jr. Yeah, that's, Michael, that's a, uh, that's a Michael, future. Um, right? but, Eddie, so. Eddie Jordan is saying that he said that if he was still a, a, a racing team owner, he would hire the Brazilian driver, which I forgot the name. Uh, it's, a, it's a new guy who's been winning quite a lot and won the... Um, Formula 2 by miles in points. Oh, like, yeah, he got snubbed. Yeah. Um, it's a Brazilian guy? It's a Brazilian guy. I saw someone... There's, uh, we, we'll talk about this next week. Yes. We'll talk about this next week. So, so, there, there's a guy in, right? uh, so that's my very early pick, of course. That's a good pick. <laughs> yeah, but what about the second? <laughs> For this race in particular? This race in particular. I don't know. It's so tough because we don't know what we don't know. Yeah. I think yeah. going into the season... I think Hamilton's a bold... Prediction is second place. I do. Very bold. Yeah. Because I think I it, like him a lot. So I could see it either. I'd say Sergio Perez or Charles Leclerc. And that's that's exactly where I was going. I'm thinking Hamilton's going to win it. And no, no. I, but Max Verstappen's going to win it. Nope. It's going to be Hamilton Whoops. and Sergio Perez. Who comes doesn't in have the faster car. You think so? I think so. I think okay. it's going to be an upset. I think. Really? I think that's what's going to happen. I like you. Dominant. Like yeah. Yeah. That Max Verstappen was last year in the RB19. He said the RB20 does everything in a car that he wants it to and more. Even, <laughs> so I just think we're in for another season of Max Verstappen. So if you like the Dutch, you're going to be excited. How many did he win last year? 19 out of 22. <laughs> Shit. And this Man. race calendar has It's like 20, Bayern Munich. three or 24. <laughs> Bayern Munich of a Formula One. Yeah. Oh. Halfway through the season, he won. Like the championship, essentially. Unless he just didn't race for the rest of the year, you know? But Catch up. I watched Drive to Survive. It just came yeah. out last week. I can't take right. anything away from him. He's right. an incredible driver. He, he definitely is an aggressive driver, but you I can't take anything away from him. I don't like he him. He doesn't love him. I do. Uh, Who? Verstappen. Verstappen. I don't like him, but he is fast. Uh, he's fast. The name of my, uh, my top-seeded Formula One fantasy team is Can't Be Verstopped. Because I don't think he can be this year. But I am a huge Lewis Hamilton fan. I want uh, I Daniel Ricciardo to do really well. Uh, he's, I think he'd be cool. I'd yeah. love to see Ricciardo finish in the top ten. And then I want I want Yuki out Ricardo. and then the Liam Lawson. Liam Lawson and Liam Lawson. He's a driver of the future yeah. too. He's really uh, good. He is man. I'm he deserves it. He deserves a seat. Unbelievable. On that note, we thank you guys for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe. Share with your friends and, uh, and comment. And comment again. And we'll see you next week as we dive into the world of Formula One. Yeah, wow. Thanks <laughs> for watching. Bye 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 bye.